Hey, my name is Ben Ibbotson, and today I'm going to show you how to rig a character's face using joystick and sliders. So let's jump in After Effects and check it out. Cool, so we're here inside of After Effects and I've already got my character ready for you that we're going to rig up and animate. Um, so all I've done basically is create this little character called Louie. Um, I've just got some basic shape layers um, and just created circles and rectangles to create these features. Um, so you've got the mouth, uh, which we use as a circle, and I've got, got a trim path on it. Um, got his pupil, his eyes, left pupil, right pupil, the right side and the left side, which I'll, I'll show you how I can animate that in a second. You've got the face, which is just a, a rectangle, and then the back of the toilet paper. Um, so we're going to start off um, by opening joystick and sliders. So if you just go to the window tab and then down to joystick and sliders, it should just pop up in your screen. Let's drag that out. So what we're going to do um, to work with joystick and sliders, what it wants from you is it wants its front on phase of your character. Then it wants the right extreme, the left extreme, the up extreme, and the down extreme. And that's all you can do with the keyframes and then it'll um, create the code behind them, match it all together. So to begin with, we want to get our front on face. So everything's pretty much gonna be the same, but what I'm gonna to do to the left and right side, uh, I'm just gonna scale them down. So if I unlink that, cause we only want to scale on the X axis. So there we go. We've got the face looking how we want it to look when it's front on. So we're gonna keyframe all these I'm um, going to keyframe the position of the back, um, position all of these, and add keyframes onto the position. Um, so what we're going to do first though is parent the pupil to the eye, because wherever the eye moves the pupil will go with it. Um, and let me just colour these so we can see them a little bit better. And then we'll colour these as well, uh, just so they stand out so it's easy to look at. So what we're going to do is just going to create our first uh, five keyframes. So just select everything. Move this up a little bit so you can see a bit more. Go along one keyframe, keyframe everything again. Go one frame, keyframe everything again. So these are our five phases, our five states. So I've already got the first one. So what we're going to do now is do our extreme for the far right. So to begin with, we want to open up the left and the right side. So we're probably going to move these to about 60%. And then to make this a little bit easier, what I'm going to do for now is just add a little fill. Just for now, just to get the keyframes looking right onto that right hand side, because we're looking right and let's move that same color. So we know what it's going to look like when he's turning right, basically. Um, so now we need to move the eyes and the mouth to the far right. Probably about there. Um, and then we're just going to move the pupils to the right as well. So it looks like he's looking out to the right. So you see the eyes, I've got like a white little highlight, but we'll hide that in a little bit. Um, so everything's moved to the right, but we want the front features, as you turn to the right, the front features move to the right, but the back features all move in the opposite direction. So the toilet roll here at the back just needs to move and line up with the back like that. And that gives you your depth. So you want that to be in line with the back end of that toilet roll there. So that's him looking far off to the right. We go along one keyframe. We do exactly the same, but just making him look to the left this time. So 6% on those. But what I'm gonna do this time, I'm just gonna take the fill off of that one and put it on that one, just again, so it's easier to see. Let's move the position of the eye and the mouth to the side and then we'll get the pupils to follow and then again we'll just move the back just so it's in line with the far right the toilet roll so roughly around there and then so we've got front on position right position left position now this one needs to be the up and the down. So when he's looking up, you're not going to see the sides at all. So we can leave them at 0% on the scale. And then we're going to get the mouth and the eyes all to look up. So probably we can go two tabs and then I'll move the mouth a little bit higher. And then just make it all look 
like it's moved the pupils all the way up as well. And again, so now what we want to do is if, if the front, so say if your nose, if you look up, your nose goes up, but then the back of your head goes down. So we want to move these down a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, just to make it give you that fake 3D effect. And then now we want to do the same, but basically he needs to look down. So we're going to move all the face features down. So if you grab the eye, the eye and the mouth, we'll move them down a little bit. Move the eyes down a little bit more, just to make it feel like it's looked down more, and then move the pupils all the way down again. And then this time you want the back one just to be moved up a little bit. So it looks like as your nose goes down, you get the back of your head comes up. So now we're gonna, we've got all our little keyframes happening, so we're happy with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of our keyframes. Again, just go through the middle, middle, looking right, looking left, looking up, and looking down. So we're gonna select them all and press this little button here, and this creates the controller that you'll move all your features with. So if I do face control, and what this does, it creates all the expression in the background, so all those numbers have turned red, and you've lost all your keyframes. That basically means it's just turned it to an expression. So now if I just move this control to the side, we should have this working. So if it looks around, So everything's working rigged wise. We've just got a few issues which we knew would happen and we need to fix. Um, so you can see the toilet roll looks a bit odd. It looks great when it looks to the left, but when it looks to the right, it's a bit skewed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a fill effect on these two. We've already got one on this one, on the left side. So we're just gonna copy that and paste it onto the right side as well. So again, now you're gonna have the issue of it looks left and right, you're not gonna see the end of the toilet roll. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a little expression on each of these. Um, that'll really help the effect um, make it visible. Right, so what we're gonna do now is gonna add an expression onto uh, the left and the right side of the toilet roll so that as he looks left and or right, the fill effect is active or, or unactive. So for now, we're just gonna tidy up our little window slightly because we don't need to see any of these right now. So all I'm doing is just activating the little shy guy, clicking them, and then just makes it a little bit easier for us to see our windows. Uh, so we've got our position key, our position keyframe open, which we will need and we'll need to reference. And if we dig down into the effects on the right hand side, so if you go down into composite, so you've got um, effect opacity. So if I look to the left, you see this bit is the color of the gray, which we don't want it to be. But if I make this zero, we can see the end, which is what we want to see. So I'm gonna put a little expression on here to make it zero or 100% depending on the position keyframe of the X on here. So if I press Option if you're on a Mac or Alt if you're on Windows and click on that, we get this little uh, little extra window pop up. So this is where we're gonna put our, our little expression in. So I'm gonna start off by typing if. So what we want to start off is by defining what we're measuring. So we've got if, and then we're gonna use this little button here which is called the pick whip. And we're gonna select the expression so what that's referencing now is both sides of that expression, so the X and the Y, but we only really wanted to reference the X. So we're gonna put a little square bracket, zero square bracket. So that's basically saying, I want it to affect the first part of those figures. Put a little space, and then we're gonna put a greater than zero in. So what this is saying now, is we need to put this in uh, brackets. So this is saying that if this layer, if this value here, is larger than zero, so if it's larger than zero, which is now, then make this effect happen. So we're gonna return and put 100. And if it isn't that, so we put else, return zero. So now, if I move this to the right hand side, it's the gray, and if I move to the left, it's the end of the toilet roll. And you can see by this number here being zero, if I go higher, turns to 100. And if it goes on zero, it's bang in the middle. So all I'm gonna do now is basically copy this effect, put it into the right hand side, uh, sorry, the left hand side, compositing options, option click, as I'm on a Mac, and then paste it in. And then all I'm gonna do is just reverse these figures. So put 100 in here, oh, 100 in here, and then make this one zero. So now we should have, as he moves to the left and to the right, both ends show. If 
make these. So one last thing I want to do quickly, as I can move this around now, is you can see the uh, the pupils still stick out over the top of the eyes. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, the way I find easiest um, is just by duplicating the eye, each eye up. Uh, Command D if you're on a Mac, just to duplicate and put them above each pupil. I'm just going to change the easy color again, just so we can so they stand out. And then on the pu pupils, if you switch your modes, you get your track mat options. So on each pupil, you want to put it as an alpha mat, and that just basically makes it as a mask. And then now what you can do is just add some keyframes. And then we're just going to move him around. Like so. Let's move that one like that. Smooth everything out a little bit because everything's nicer when it's all smooth and arky. Don't want anything to be too harsh or jagged. And then as we press play, everything moves around as if it's in fake, fake 3D. Thanks for watching guys. I really enjoyed doing this tutorial for you. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Have a great week and I'll see you soon.